Hello, and welcome to a member 365 webinar, Contact Demographics. Hello, I'm your host. My name is Christine Bundy. I'm the Customer Success Manager at Member 365. And today, um, we're going to go over contact demographics. But before I dive into that, I'd just like to do a couple of housekeeping items. So today's webinar is being recorded. It will be sent to everyone who registered. If you've missed anything or have any questions, please don't hesitate to put them into the Q&A section at the bottom of the screen. Everyone has been muted, your cameras are off, so just type in those questions as they come to you and we'll have a Q&A session at the end. So for today, we're going to go through a couple of definitions, because what is contact demographics and how does that work? Then we're going to go into how to create a contact demographic and apply it to the contact record, and then also what it looks like in the member portal if you want to have that option. Then we'll go through some best practices and have some Q&A. So contact demographics, what are they? So a contact demographic is a custom field that you as an administrator want to collect more information about a contact and have it on their contact record that is not associated to the membership, but the contact themselves. You can also make this visible to the member if you so choose in the member portal to allow them to be able to update that information. So kind of anything above and beyond their membership and directory questions, say, for example, you want to know if people want to volunteer or you want to learn about people's specific interests, you can create a contact demographic to collect that information and be able to segment and communicate to those individuals based off their responses. Contact demographics are typically used when there's more than just a one-off. If it's a one-off, that's when you would use tags, and I'll get to that in just a minute. There is also organization demographics. It is exactly the same as a contact demographic. It's just attached to the organization record, not the contact record. So it has the same kind of functionality, custom forms, being able to create uh, questions that are specific for the organization that go above and beyond the membership questions that you ask during the application and renewal process. Then last, as I mentioned, tags. So tags are another way to segment. However, they're just for one-offs. So if you simply just wanna know who wants to be a volunteer or who has volunteered for your organization in the past or who was a sponsor or a speaker in the past, you can have a tag. If you want to get into more detail and you need to collect more information, that's when you would use a contact demographic. So you can use a tag for a one-off you can use a contact demographic for when you want to collect more information. So those are the definitions. So now let's jump into member 365 and show you how to create one. So let me just pull up the member 365 dashboard. So to create contact demographic, we're first going to actually create the form. So we're going to go up to modules, forms, and click on create. So there are the other options to manage in see the analytics and we'll go through that in just a minute. So let's create a contact demographic. So when I click here, there are multiple options because there are different types of forms for different reasons within the platform. So you have your membership form for your membership extended field questions. You have additional questions other than just the contact information for your event registration if you need it. And then we have our contact demographics. So this is one that we're gonna focus on today. So we're gonna hit create. And we're first gonna start with a name. So I'm actually gonna use this for creating my prospect demographics. And I need to add a category. I can either select from the ones that are already existing. So I could say, all oh, this is for prospects for membership, or I can add a new one and I could say new members and hit add and have that automatically add as a category. Then you have what configurations you want to enable. Do you want to allow for resubmission? So this is when, if you allow in the member portal, they can submit multiple times so they can update that form so that you have the most accurate information. I always like to. You can also add a limit so they can only update it once or never as much as you would like. So there is the ability to allow that um, if you want it as an option. 
The next one here is the lock form. Now this is a security feature on all of our forms and it's really important to understand this. This is how you would actually be able to delete a form. You actually need to unlock a form before you can delete it. And this is because if you delete a form, it deletes all the data attached to that form that is from the contact record. So as a security feature, you can't just go into the form manager. You have to go into the form itself, unlock it, and then you can delete. And I'll show you how to do that in a minute. So I'm going to leave this locked. Then this last question is show form question and answers in the member portal. So this is for the analytics side of things. So you have the analytics in the administrator side under modules, forms, analytics, but you can also allow the members to get first time responses for those analytics in the member portal if you want to allow them to. Now there might be cases like voting that you would want to allow that uh, for or surveys it might not be a contact demographic, but it is available if it's what you would like to provide. Once you have everything configured the way you want it, you have your name, you then would launch the question editor. So, and in here, you have all the options for creating your questions. And I'm just going to go through them. Now, the number one thing I will point out is that when you are creating forms, any type, it is best to use quantitative questions, not qualitative questions. And I say that because you want to be able to filter off of the answers that they provide. And you can only do that with quantitative. So like drop downs, check boxes, multiple choice radio buttons, anything along those lines are how you can segment members based off of the form questions. If you have things like open text boxes, date pickers, memos, or files, you can't filter off of those options. So the first five here are the qualitative information, and then the remaining five are the quantitative. So just be aware that if you want or looking to me, like I want to get a specific group together from these responses, then make sure you're using one of the quantitative questions. So the first one here is a simple text box. So this is if you wanted to do um, kind of if other, please specify kind of question, or if you're looking for contact demographic information that you need to follow up on, especially for surveys. So not always necessary, but it's again, qualitative open-ended questions are for the text input option. You can always delete as needed. Then you have your date picker. So here is where individuals can select a specific date. So if you want um, date of birth, or if you want to know when the last time they volunteered, or even in this case for our prospects, when was the last time you communicated with them, you can have a date picker for that information to be provided. Then we have a memo box. So this is for if you add notes or long answers, uh, you can have the option to have a memo text area within a form. And then you also have the file option. So people can upload documents that need to be provided for your database for safekeeping or for renewing something. You can also have this in the renewal email if they have to provide your cert certificates in order to be approved for their membership. Then we have the radio buttons. So these are the same. They just have a different view. So horizontal and vertical. Uh, it, it's multiple choice. So they only the respondent can only select one of the options that you have provided for them. Then you also have your check boxes, and they are the same except for it's they the except for the respondent can select multiple. So all that apply. And then finally, we have the drop down. And the drop down option is if you want to have a list of individuals, instead of maybe doing a checkbox or a radio button, you want to provide a list to kind of keep the form shorter and allow them to select only one option. Then we also have the ability to have a header. So I can come in here and I can say that this is for my prospects. 
I can add a description if I want underneath. So this could be for calls and communications. And then I can add in my questions below it. Now there is this great other tool called the iterator and what it does, it is allows for multiple responses to the same set of questions. Now this is something I recommend that if you are doing something like a, a prospect list that you would use because you could set it up to say, who did you talk to? What was their job title from that organization? You can also do it, uh, so how many times you've communicated with them. That also can maybe go in the notes, depending on how you want to set that up. But if you want to keep that kind of all together, that's when you would put it in your contact demographic. And if I wanted to add these questions, I would simply just put them in so I could have a radio button in between. Or, and I can also then add a drop down. I can edit the iterator to say what exactly this is. So this is for my calls. I can set maximum and minimums to how many times you can fill this out I won't for this one. And then for the radio button, I can say, I got a setup. I can say uh, how, how many calls have I had. And I can either answer them here. So I could just say that this is one, call one, or I can do the paste option. So this is where I could actually put in multiple rows and every row is a response. So I have one, one already created manually and then I do two, three and I hit go, it automatically add all the answers. I can move answers kind of up or down as needed with the arrows or I can delete them as needed as well. Once I have all my answers and my question in, I would also then go to properties. So another thing that you can do that's really cool is you can filter within the organization based off of these responses. So if I wanted to get a list of everybody that has only had one call so I can do communications, I can filter based off of that in my analytics and get a list of who I need to contact because I have to do a second round of, of calls. So adding that in, there are other options for the directory in here as well, which we will cover in the directory one, which is in a couple of weeks. There we go. So I'm going to hit save and that will save the question for me. Now for the drop down, I could do something on along the lines of job title because I want to know who I've spoken to and what the job title is. And so I could do a manager. I'm just going to put a couple answers. I could say the admin, or I could say the. Then finally, I could just have an open text box if I wanted to know who it was. So I can just say the individual's name and be able to hit. So once I get all the questions and you can take your time, you can also move questions up or down by simply clicking on them and dragging them. So if you want them in a specific order, you can rearrange them. If you delete a question from an existing form, it will delete the data to that question. If you simply are, are editing the text within it, you're fine, except for if you remove an answer, that will delete all of the data for that question as well. So you just need to be careful when you're making updates to forms, especially if you have data attached to it, because it will delete things if you're removing content like answers or actual questions, we'll remove that data completely from the system. So once you have all the questions, you simply hit save and then you hit publish. If you have it saved as a draft, it won't become active. You have to hit publish to be able to see it on the contact records. So now I can see that my prospect option is available. 
And if I also can go into my contacts and go to settings, which is the second location where you can add contact demographics, I can see it here. I'll see my prospect as well. I can also create a, a contact demographic here as well, but not with the form. So this is where you could create a contact demographic and attach a form to it that you already have existing. So if I wanted to use the same form that I've used for one of my other contact demographics, I could attach it. The only thing that I will make you aware of is that the data will all then collect into the one form. So if you're having multiples, you might want to duplicate that form first and then attach it to a contact demographic simply as typing in the name. So I could actually create a one-off for, as I see here, courses, and I can create a contact number just for this. Now you can do one-offs for contact demographics. Like if you strictly just want to use contact demographics and not use tags, or you want to use tags for some things and contact demographics for other, you can. Depends on how you're feeling comfortable with contact demographics versus tags. I personally, if it's a one-off, like to use a tag, I find it simple. Uh, but it's dependent on you. So now let's pull up a contact. So, and see what that's going to look like. So I'm just gonna actually pull up my contact record. And on the contact record, all the contact demographics are on the right side here. And right now I have none selected. Now the ones that are blue highlighted means that there was a form attached to them. If they're black, just like the course is one that we made, it means that there's no form attached and it's just a one off. So I can check it off or not. If it has a form attached to it, so if I say speakers, there's this eyeball that will appear. This means that it makes this contact demographic visible in the member portal for the contact to be able to update at any time or see depending on your settings. Because you can also make it so that they can't edit anything, they just strictly can see the information. So I can turn these on and I'll be able to see them in the member portal. So if I go in now as a member and I by impersonating, I can go to my account, my profile and see those options here. So I, as the member, can fill them out as needed. If I'd like. If I go back to the member, back to the CRM from the member portal and I filled out the volunteer one and I click on it, I'll see the responses right away. So it is in real time. So what, whether the administrator updates these or the contact does in the member portal, it will automatically update in both locations. Now, if I needed to adjust any of these, you can go into modules, go to forms, go to manage and find the form that you wanna update. You can duplicate forms if you like as well. So if you want to, but you just need to make sure when you are duplicating that you only use the unique name. You cannot use a name that's already existing in the system. So if I was going to copy my media contact demographic form, I would need to make sure I called it media two or media 3.0 or something along the lines that makes it unique and doesn't, it, it, not identical to this one. If I need to find out or get analytics on my responses, I can come up to forms and then go to the analytics. And so I'm just gonna pull up the volunteer one that we already have set up. So I can either go through the pages, I can extend it to a larger view, or I can just simply search the name and find it here. Here I can see how many responses have been submitted. I can get an overview for the questions. And then if I wanna get into more detail, I can go to the details page. And this is where those filter options are really important. So that's why I mentioned, it's a really good idea to add that to each of the questions, because then I can filter based off of them, especially if they're 
quantitative questions. So questions where I have already designated the answers and the individual selects them. So I'm just gonna pick one. I can see the individuals that are for that and I can then export it if I need to have that for a third party or for a specific reason. You can also find this information in the list builder to create a list based off of this answer as well. So this is strictly for reporting. If you want to create a list for communications, you can do that in the list builder. All right, so we've created a, our contact demographic, shown you how you can see it in the member portal, how you can see it on the member contact record. The other thing is if you want to delete a contact record, that's when you go back to your contact demographic settings under contact settings, contact demographics. Here's where you would actually delete that contact demographic from appearing on the contact record or member portal. So maybe you're cleaning up, you have too many options and you're consolidating. This is where you would come and be able to delete or update. So if you wanted to adjust any of these names, you could, and it would automatically update everywhere for you uh, just as an option if it's something that you're looking to do. All right, so let's jump then back into our slides and let's go through our best practices. So the first one is enable the filtering with the analytics. So that was when we went into the analytics and could select a specific answer for the question, quantitative questions to be able to get a report just for those individuals. Again, you can also use filtering within the list builder if you're just trying to get a list to communicate through the email campaign module. Next one is create quantitative questions, not qualitative questions for segmenting and list building communications. So again, quantitative questions are where you have a predetermined answer that they have to select. Qualitative is open-ended, so the member or contact can reply in any form, and you cannot build lists or create anything off of it. And then third is keep it simple. You don't always have to use a contact demographic. You could simply use a tag if it's a one off. So if you simply just want to know who is a volunteer within your organization or who was a speaker and there's no additional information associated to that, then create a tag. Keep it simple. Don't get complicated. If there's more and you need that information and it adds value to your organization, then do the contact demographic so you can collect what's needed. All right, time for questions. What is quantitative question? Yeah, so as I mentioned throughout this, a quantitative question is a predetermined answered question that you can segment based off of the answers from your respondents. So it's where you have either a drop down, a checkbox, so a select all kind of option, or a multiple choice, which we call radio buttons within the system. How to create a list contact demographic form question. So that's a good one. And actually I'll jump back into the software for that one. So within member 365, within the list builder. So if I just go to create a list and I can just say that this is for my contact. And I can go to my contact forms right here and click on your contact classification. So what it actually used to be called, we switched it to contact demographics. And then I can find the contact demographics. So if I want to do my volunteers and I wanted to say, um, why do you want to volunteer? What is the reason I can save and send communications to only those individuals. So you can completely segment here as well for communications. So you can save your list and be able to use it in your email marketing. All right, last question. 
Can you explain the difference between tags and contact demographics one more time? Okay, so tags are one-offs. So I only want to know who my primary contact is or my volunteer is or my speaker, anything along those lines, I just one-off. I don't need to know anything other than that. I just want to have a specific segment or ability to pull a list off of one criteria. A contact demographic is for when you have custom fields kind of above and beyond the membership or directory or the contact details that you need to collect for your members to be able to properly communicate with them or for your internal purposes. So I hope that helped explain it a little bit better. I always like to end with a few helpful resources. So we always do have our chat on during business hours. We have a full, full-fledged knowledge base with lots of information in there that we are updating daily. And if you ever need anything above and beyond that, you can also do a submit a ticket, which is directly on your dashboard. So in our new interface on the dashboard, you have a help center right here where you can access the items pointed here. All right. Well, thank you very much for joining us. We hope you join us for our next webinar and we'll talk to you soon. Thank you.